five largest abandoned cities in the far north of Russia. Usually, the territory beyond the Arctic Circle in Russia is called the Far North, as well as territories with permafrost and extremely harsh climatic conditions that are not suitable for the life and people to work, the Arctic tundra, forest tundra. There is also the concept of areas equalized to the Far North. They are in more southern latitudes, but they are also unfavorable for living. Currently, about 10 million people live in the far north, which is about 7% of whole Russians. And the largest polar city in the world is Murmansk, where are 290,000 people live, located on the coast of the Parians Sea. In Soviet times, the north was rich in various minerals and fish. In addition to the Gulag camps, people were lured with the long ruble, and which is higher northern and regional salary coefficient, which allowed an ordinary miner to have a salary that was two, three times higher than the national average. Also, the northerners were entitled to increased holidays with payment of travel to the south and early increased pension, affordable housing and other significant benefits for workers Cities and settlements with high-rise buildings and the infrastructure necessary for everyday life were built. Schools, shops, cafes and houses of culture. Faced with new political and economic realities of savage capitalism in the 1990s, many of the extraction industries ceased to be profitable. Most of the once prosperous working settlements and cities dependent on one or two city-forming enterprises fell into decay. Some of them were forever abandoned by people and officially closed, turning into silent and gloomy ghost towns, which are now only at the mercy of nature and rare extreme tourists. In some cases, the settlements were abandoned due to the natural disaster and accidents. In parenthesis, the maximum number of people of the settlement in the 1970s-1980s is indicated. CTSs belong to urban settlements and were rightfully included in the rating. Settlement Pramushlini, 15,000 people, Komi Republic. A mining village in the tundra about 15 km from Varkuta was founded in the 1950s with the opening of two coal mines, Pramushlina and Centralna, which were built by prisoners from Ukraine and Lithuania. The peak of the population of the village which was part of the so-called Varkuta Ring, was in the 1970s, when it reached 15,000 people. The city started to become empty back in the 80s, and in 1995 the Pramushlina mine was closed. After a major accident in 1998, at the Centralne mine it was decided to close it, after which the town was doomed. Most of the people were resettled to Varkuta. Some were able to leave where the man lained. By 2007, the village was completely abandoned. Settlement Kadikchan, 6,000 people, Magadan region. The settlement on the Kalima Highway to Magadan was founded during the Second World War by mines number no. 7 and number no. 10 for the extraction of coal that was mainly supplied for the needs of the Arkagalinska RPP, which supplied half of the Kalima with electricity. At the end of the 80s, the population was approaching 6,000 people. The settlement developed in stages, so it was secretly divided into three parts – old, new and newest Kadikchan. In the last part, the main housing stock of five-story buildings was located, and the rest were used mainly for subsidiary farming. In 1992, mine number no. 7 was closed, and in 1996, there was an explosion at mine number no. 10. After the accident, the last mine was badly damaged and closed, and people began to be evicted from the village. Most of the power plant's turbines were also mothballed. By 2010, the village was empty, and now it meets tourists with abandoned but still strong five-story buildings, some of which are distinguished by unusual bay windows. Settlement Iultin, 5,000 people, Chukotka Autonomous Region. The settlement was founded in the 1950s for the workers of the Iultinsky mining and processing plant, where one of the largest deposits of tin and tungsten was discovered. The road to the village and the first buildings were built by prisoners of the camps. Residential buildings were erected mainly two-storey, although there were several five-storey buildings. By the end of the 80s, the population exceeded 5,000 people. With the collapse of the USSR, mining and processing of ore became 
unprofitable and in 1994 the plant was closed and mothballed. By 2000 the last people left the settlement. Settlement Halmir U, 4,500 people, Komi Republic. The settlement was founded in the 1940s, about 80 km northeast from Varkuta, when deposits of valuable coal for coke production were discovered by the Halmir U River. In 1957, a mine was opened and the workers' settlement was built near it, where about 7,000 miners and their families arrived in several years. In 1959, the village was transferred from the Nyenets Autonomous Region to the Komi Autonomous Soviet Socialist Republic, which specialized in coal mining. In the 1780s, the population of the village was more than 4,000 people. After the transition to a market economy in 1993, the mine was declared unprofitable and closed, and by the end of the 1995, the city itself was liquidated. Whoever disagreed with the move away were forcibly transported to hostels and abandoned houses in neighboring Varkuta by the riot police. Now the ghost town is used as a military training ground, and the houses are targets for bombers. Settlement Neftigorsk, 4,000 people, Sakhalin region. A village in the north of Sakhalin Island, 100 km from the city of Okhra, for oil workers engaged in oil production on the shelf of the Sea of Ahotsk and the families were built in the mid-1960s. Until the 70s, it had the name Vostok. Residential housing consisted mainly of low-quality Block 5-story Khrushchev-era buildings, not intended for earthquake-prone areas. In 1995, as a result of a powerful earthquake of magnitude 7.5, most of the buildings were destroyed. It's been decided not to restore the settlement, and the surviving residents were resettled in other cities of the region or were given certificates for housing in other regions.